Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my C video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover a whole bunch of questions that I recently received. So I'm going to talk about smart pointers, regular old pointers, memory allocation, as well as polymorphic templates. Like always, all the code and a transcript of the video is available in the description underneath this video. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, you probably should, or you will almost definitely be confused. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so we're going to be covering some rather complicated things. Now, basically, a smart pointer is a class that's going to provide the power of pointers, but also it's going to handle the reallocation of memory when it is no longer required. And I thought I would go and talk about malloc here, or memory allocation, however you want to call it, and basically how it worked with C, and how pointers and allocating memory sort of worked before smart pointers. All right, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say how much space that I want to be able to store. And basically, whenever you define a primitive type like an int or a float, you define exactly the amount of space to set aside. Now, if you need to define a specific amount of space that you would set aside, one option before smart pointers was to use memory allocation. So what I'm going to do is I am, or may lock, however you want to call it. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define how much, how many numbers I want to be able to store. So I'm going to go standard C out and how many numbers do you want to store? All right. And then I'm going to allow the user to enter that. And then, of course, I'm going to store that. So C in and we're going to store that in amount to store, of course. And now what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to create an integer pointer and set aside enough space based off of the amount of space that they asked for. I'm going to call this pnums, then I'm going to go pnums is equal to, and go int and star, and I need to create an integer pointer, and I need to cast the pointer and then define how much space to set aside. To do that, I go malloc and amount to store, and then I just multiply that times the data type that I'm going to be storing inside of there, which is going to be an integer. Okay. Then I want to come in and I want to verify that memory has been allocated. So make sure that this is not equal to null. I'm then going to be cycling. So I'm going to need an index that I'm going to initialize to zero, of course. Oh, and one thing, make sure that you have standard io.h memory. You're also going to need vector and, I, and string and IO stream, and that should be it. Let's put the C standard library in there as well, okay? And you can pause the video if at any point I'm moving too quickly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cycle through here while I is less than the amount of values that I want to store, and then just go standard C out and ask the user to enter a number each time based off of the number of values that they want to store, standard C in. Also received a lot of questions about end L like this. Um, end L, basically what that's going to do is flush our buffer. So it, we have no reason to use it anytime we have C in because the buffer is automatically flushed anytime C in follows a standard C out, okay? So basically you're going to, it's okay to use new line or a backslash N instead of end L as long as you flush the buffer, say, after every paragraph. So it's not anything that you need to really obsess about. It's just a question I received a couple times here recently. All right, so we're gonna store that inside of our memory that we set aside. And then of course, I'm gonna to have to increment i. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out the screen, the values that were just entered, just to verify that we have those. So I'll say, you entered these numbers, and then I'll throw in a new line after that. And then I'm gonna cycle through and print all of them out the screen. So create. I give it a value of zero and then continue to cycle, of course, as long as we have values and then increment I and then just print out all those different values onto our screen. So, and of course, we're going to use an index with the I on there to print them out. All right, so there we go. And then what we're gonna have to do is because we set aside that space, 
after we are all done, because we're not using smart pointers here, I am going to have to come in and delete that. All right. So that is how we did everything before smart pointers. And we can run this here and we can go and run through exactly what's going on. So let's do it again. Now, how many numbers do you want to store? Let's say just three. And you can go one, two, three. And then you can see that it cycles through and prints all those out onto the screen. Okay, so pretty neat stuff. That's the old way of doing things. Just wanted to review that. Okay, now to use smart pointers instead, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this altogether. So delete that. And then we'll come down here and get rid of this because a smart pointer is going to automatically reallocate any memory that it takes up. And to create one, you just go unique pointer and int and this is going to be an integer array of course and we'll just call it the same thing so pnums then we're going to have to create it so we're going to go new int and then we'll say amount to store is passed inside of there so there we go got rid of that and everything else is going to work exactly the same we don't have to worry about allocating anything how many numbers you want to store we can go three and we can go one, two, and three. And it automatically works just like that. Now, one thing to be aware of, and I'm going to cover this in another tutorial here, is that a unique pointer can only have one owner. So, for example, if you would go standard unique pointer like this and int and then you went, let's say you wanted to call it pnoms2, you could not go pnom like this and store that inside of there. that is going to give you an error and if you did want to actually pass these along you're going to have to use something called a shared pointer and like i said i'll cover that in a later tutorial but uh the unique pointer is going to work for you most of the time and that is the basic rundown of how the differences between the previous way we used pointers to allocate memory and the new way using smart pointers. And I didn't want to really dwell on them that much. Like I said, I'm going to cover them more in later parts of this tutorial series. But I wanted to answer another question which I received recently, which is how to create polymorphic templates. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple different types of pizza. And we will use a polymorphic technique in, along with templates to automatically generate them. So I'm going to create a class and it's going to be called pizza, of course. And I can go, and just to keep this very simple, I'm going to go public. And then this is going to be overridden. So I'm going to call this virtual void make pizza so got that all set up and let's set that to zero all right so very very simple that is how we're going to set that up now what we're also going to do here is we are going to create some templates so these are going to basically be called in order and perform different tasks based off of which templates are going to be assigned so these are going to be the last templates are going to be covered so i'm going to have a temp a uh, class it's going to be called New York style crust like this and go public and then we'll go standard whoops yeah standard string and this is going to be called add ingredient so it's going to return a string and that string in this situation is going to be crust so thin you can see through it all right, so let's throw two new lines inside of there. Okay, so there is a function we're gonna create and we're gonna create another, or a class that is. We're gonna assign these to pizzas. So the next one is going to be a deep dish, deep dish crust. And let's just go and change this. You can see the name is the same. Let's keep that the same also. So I'm gonna say super awesome Chicago deep dish all right so there we go we got those set up and now what i'm going to do is i am going to create my middle templates all right so obviously these aren't templates i think i accidentally called these templates and obviously they're regular old classes all right so these are going to be templates that are going to be created so i'm going to go type name just like we did previously whenever we talked about templates and i'm just going to make this t just like i did previously and then i'm going to go class lots of meat and public t and then public and this is going to return a string so we go string and i'm going to call add ingredient again so add ingredient 
and let's go and put a space in there like that. And then what this guy is going to do is it is going to return a string and it's just gonna say lots of random meat. And then what it's gonna do, I'm gonna put a comma inside of there. And then I'm gonna go plus and I'm gonna to refer to template add ingredients and that is going to be passed inside of it and that is actually going to call either call this up here this version of add ingredient or this version of add ingredient all right and then i'm going to create another one on top of that just to generate all these guys so let's come in here and just paste this down inside of there and this one is let's call this vegan so class and being in, whoops, you know what, I don't want that one. I want to copy this one right here just to keep myself from having to do too much here. So like this, and then also put a semicolon at the end there and a semicolon at the end there. And like I said, this one is going to be called vegan. And then down here with add ingredients, I'm going to come in here like this. And I'm going to go vegan cheese and veggies and then whatever comes after that and then we're going to call add ingredient once again it's going to be either deep dish crust or new york style crust whatever we decide to do all right now i'm going to actually use or create classes that are going to use both of these templates as well as inherit from the pizza class so again i'm going to have to go template and type name I'm going to put a space inside of these as well. So space, 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 template. All right, so type name. And I just leave this as T again. And then I can go class. And then I'll go meet New York style. And you can see how this is starting to resemble something that's polymorphic and public. And there is our template, which we're adding to this. And then I'll go public. And also we're going to inherit from pizza. So we got that set up. And... Then we can go and create our function and I'll go void make pizza. And then I can just come in here and print out all this information and then refer to the different, so I'll say meet New York. And you can stack these as much as you want. I'm just gonna do it, uh, I guess technically it's two times. So meet New York style, that is going to be the type of pizza we're going to be generating here. And then I can call the template add ingredients like this and it's going to automatically handle it for me so that's gonna be really cool i'm going to do the same thing for an additional pizza and then i'll come down in main and i'll show you how to create these customized classes so this one is going to be called vegan deep dish vegan deep dish if you have any questions about pizza feel free to ask me all right hopefully this isn't too confusing uh vegan deep dish so it's like a recipe for making pizza and i don't have to change anything else there and then the interesting thing is i can come down into main and what the heck why don't i use a unique pointer as well here because we already talked about smart pointers so i'm gonna go standard vector and standard unique pointer there it is again and what we're going to have inside of this is going to be pizzas and i can call this pizza orders so it's going to have all the pizzas that we need to create here and then i just go and generate our pizza types and then place them at the end of our vector so to do that i can go pizza orders in place back and then go and actually create them so i'll go meet new york style and i want to go and use the template lots of meat and then i'm also going to come in and go new york style crust and then i can just close this off and create that guy right there and there we go and that's going to go and throw them inside of there then i can do the same exact thing for an additional pizza so throw this inside of there again except this is going to be vegan deep dish is what i want to create deep dish and this is definitely not going to be lots of meat instead it's going to be vegan and then after that deep dish crust so deep dish crust and if you're having a hard time catching any of this then you know get the code and take a look at it it'll all make sense then and did i get everything set there 
whoops, I see a trailing parentheses, get rid of that and get rid of that one, okay? So that looks all good. And then what I can do is call the pizzas and then execute the directions for making them. So I'll go four and I'm just gonna go auto and pizza and then we'll go pizza orders and then I can cycle through and print them out. And I just go pizza and call make pizza. And you can see how we were able to polymorphically go and create these and they're awesome. Whoops, and let's go and get it some more room. And if we run it, you can see meat New York style pizza, lots of random meat, crust so thin you can see through it, and vegan deep dish, vegan cheese, veggies, super awesome Chicago deep dish pizza. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully that answered the questions that I received on those two rather a little bit complicated topics. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.